have a very upsetting question. Uh huh. This movie contains a jar of gefilte fish, mm. Manischewitz wine, and a sign that says Shabbat Shalom. Is there any chance <laughs> that the rights <laughs> are Jewish? Based on their filmmaking skills alone, I'm going to say no, Eli. <laughs> Wait, I, there's no way. Maybe they were just in hopes. That like it would help them control the media. They were like, no, trust me, this <laughs> worked for Steven Spielhammer. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because it soothes the great basilisk and keeps him dormant. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us this week, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I am amazing, Noah. I know that you are, <laughs> sir. And also joining us this week is guest masochist extraordinaire who is in for a fucking treat, Michael Marshall. Marsh, welcome back. Oh, hey, guys, this one was a treat. I don't want to give too much away, but I had never encountered the authorial voice behind this uh, this particular <laughs> effort before, and I am delighted to have them in my life. Oh, it was a trick and a treat. <laughs> it really was. So tell us, Marsh, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Halloween Hero, which is the story of a widowed cop whose suicide attempt is interrupted by an orphaned 11-year-old who knocks on his door so he decides to just keep her, yep. essentially. Oh, and it happens at Halloween, but that has literally zero bearing on anything in this movie. So <laughs> We did it, everybody. Well, it bears on the title. <laughs> Get that end credit music going, Morgan. We did it. We did it, everybody. <laughs> Short one this week. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you enjoyed The Badge, The Bible, and Bigfoot, the first entry of the Wright family we reviewed on this podcast, but all the complicated twists and turns of its incredibly well-written plot that <laughs> you confused, you will love this movie because it's about literally nothing happening. Yep. It's, it's the story of the writer sabotaging their own attempt to have a plot. Yes, yeah, no, apparently we're going to start and end the spectacular with right family films because, damn it, we have earned it. And also we could do inflict them on Marsh for the first time. That's so <laughs> fun. I'm so happy. Just the first Marsh. They've made many, many films, oh, I assure you. I can't wait to get to, to really delve into their catalog. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to say best worst budget saving measures mm -hmm. because I think this film, I suspect it didn't have a very large budget. I mean, it had a cast of like three people half the time pretending to be somebody else. Yeah, double digits financially, I would say there's the budget. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you can tell because throughout this film, they make some decisions around like the props and the staging that is very clearly trying to cut corners like... Do we need to really break a glass or should we just kind of show this thing that looks like broken glass? Do we, do we yeah. really need to buy a second calendar? We've written on it once, now we'll stick with it. So <laughs> I think there's just, I've got, throughout my notes, I've got like, oh, I can see why they were trying to save money on the budget there. It's just a re recurring motif throughout this film. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, like, again, like the budget for these movies is $80, $90 max. Oh, yeah. And honestly, normally we wouldn't even make fun of something that's this low budget, except that they're so earnest. From the heart. Oh, God, yeah. And their messaging is so poisonous, and they're putting it out in the world like, like they're daring us to do these movies. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, completely. I mean, the budget is about $80 and at least $30 of that is on peach naps, as far yeah. as I can tell. <laughs> yep. Sure is. <laughs> I can't tell you how much of a temptation it is to just PayPal the rights $100 and be like, oh, man, I hope y'all do a QAnon movie. Just <laughs> ignore um, dedicated Christian. Be like Bosnick. That sounds Christian. Fuck, they both have <laughs> All right. So I was, I'm going to go with best worst credit padding. Right. So, again, there's three people in this movie. Right. Like when they need another person, we just see that person from behind or that person's wearing a mask, literally. Mm -hmm. So it's that kind of film. So in order to make it seem like they had a legitimate cinematic runtime of checks notes, 51 minutes, they had to draw <laughs> out that six person credits. Right. Mm -hmm. And they do that by giving us I'm not kidding here. I'm not exaggerating. 18 second long still shots of the actors with their name 
on screen. And by the way, in stony silence. Yeah. Right. The music for the credits doesn't kick in until that shit is over. We do that seven fucking times. <laughs> it's so weird. It's so weird that it's in silence. Like, we all had to rewind to make sure we like our copy of it hadn't fucked up, right? Because right, 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 yeah, something's absolutely. gone on weird mm-hmm. here, right? Because there's no sound and the picture isn't moving, and you're like, "Am mm. I looking at a photograph or watching a video?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hard to tell. And I'm I'm gonna go with best worst black guy. Yes, <laughs> yes, Look, absolutely. Here's all I'm gonna say because it's the peak of my existence, and we're all good when we talk about it, but. If you've ever listened to our reviews of Ashley Wright's movies and thought to yourself, oh, that feels a little mean. You know, this is a family and, you know, maybe they're just doing a side project and they're bad at making movies. I promise you that this movie will relieve you of that guilt. (laughs) You will never feel bad for Ashley Wright ever again. Yep. (laughs) So, All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We need to be at peak performance to describe stuff this bad. So we're going to pause for a quick steroid break, but we'll be back in a flash with all the incongruous nonsense that is Halloween Hero. Okay, what about Health Crunch? $99.99 a week. Come on! Seriously? Dude, I- I'm just reading you the prices. Hey guys, what's up? Hey Noah, Heath and I want to get into peak physical shape in time for QED, but all these personal trainers and DVD programs, they're just so expensive. People were in shape before money. I don't know how this is possible. Guys, guys, first of all, we have like two days left till QED. Exactly. Massive gains is what we're going to do. And two, if you're looking to get in shape in a way that doesn't break the bank, why not try FitBod? What's FitBod? The FitBod app creates a workout routine that adapts to you as you improve and uses the equipment you already have so you can reach the next level without burning through all your free time or cash. It does? It sure does. What I love about FitBot is that it matches with my goals and not some presupposed weight that I'm supposed to lose or weird idea of getting shredded or ripped. That's why I, No Illusions, personally endorse it as a product. And you said it's cheaper than those other things? It sure is. A full year of FitBot is less than the cost of a single session with a personal trainer. Join FitBod today and build a routine that grows with you without slimming down your wallet. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app for free at fitbod.me slash gam. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash gam. All right, Eli. Let's download this app and get to work. We got to check in for the flights in like two hours. Oh, I mean, that's plenty of time, right? We got this. Oh, okay. Massive gains. All right, kids, gather around. We're already here, Mom. Right. Right. Well, good news. Uh, let me guess. You uh, you wrote another movie. That's right. This one is about a big, strong, ex cop who saves little girls or girl. But y- yes, uh huh. But it but it's also about his his faith in Christ. Okay. Yes, it's also about his faith in Christ. But it's also going to focus on how how much he loves his wife, who is played by you. Do you kids want me to be able to fuck your father or not? No, we do not. Actively, no. Uh, Unsupportive. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back for the breakdown. And we're (laughs) once again going to open up on their Too Dark to Read It logo. (laughs) (laughs) You know, there's too hot for TV. There's too dark for logo. Yeah, (laughs) there's that too. Oh, so happy to be. So I should tell the listeners we're actually recording this in advance. So this is only the week after our first visit with the Wright family. And and we came back right away. And I was very happy to see that. (laughs) But the logo is so bad because it's so dark. And because of the way each of the letters is kind of lit, it looks like it says the Wright family film as well. And I I was trying to figure out what they meant by family for a while. and What what they misspelled before I realized it was an M with just the sides missing. Yeah. So, okay. So we... Start off with the little logo and then we get police lights and there's a gunshot and we zoom in on and I'm going to go ahead and put this in air quotes broken glass. <laughs> <laughs> like this could be a photograph of broken glass with a police tape over it, right? Honestly, I would have been more impressed by just a whiteboard that said the words broken glass. <laughs> oh god, yeah, absolutely. And it's it's an extreme close up and like the extreme close up that shot really is the true saviour of the low-budget film. This is the first moment that I had where it was like, do we need to smash like a whole window for this shot? 
no, no, it's fine. If we just get a close enough view of the back of Marsh's old iPhone and yeah. throw some police tape over it, they'll get the gist. The thing's broken. It's fine. Yeah, right. Also, what glass is this meant to be breaking? I don't fucking know. Unclear. Never <laughs> is relevant to the movie Mm-mm. or anything else. I think they just got a hold of your old iPhone and they're like, we can make some use of this. We got, I, I got an idea. It's not going to be arsy. Look, I'm about to pawn this thing for a racist mask. <laughs> <laughs> but before we do, I have an idea. So, yeah, so we, we see we hear the gunshot. We see the broken glass. Then we open up on our hero, David Owen Wright. His character's name, I believe, is Michael in this one. And he's an alcoholic that keeps a variety of wines about. Yeah. Okay. Just to stop it getting too samey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wait, let's talk about this because this is masterful. We've watched, look, this is episode 376. I would say we have watched easily 100 morning people binge drinking, yes. right? Uh-huh. Easily 100. This is by far the funniest because one, half of the bottles are like red wine. Yep. Mm. And then the other half are things that you stole from your parents' cabinet as a kid <laughs> to drink behind the 7-Eleven. <laughs> and they're supposed to be our hero's rock bottom. Yeah, like one of those bottles, I swear it's a port. Like he's a classy <laughs> alcoholic. It's like, well, you know, I'm going to have one of my, my different varieties of red wine as yes. an alcoholic. I didn't just bulk buy. I thought I've got to really shop around and then I'll polish it off with a port and then maybe a little bit of uh, blackberry wine that I've got on yep. there. There was a Manischewitz blackberry wine. Incredible choice. <laughs> so. Also, on the table with all the wine, there was a tea light candle. And I thought, is this meant to be him in crisis or him having some middle aged mom's me time? <laughs> like, is the next shot going to be him pulling out a copy of Fifty Shades and Natasha One? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Slips into a morning bubble bath where right, the bubbles yeah. are all black. Yeah. Well, I, I will say, by the way, so he doesn't make us wait for a good look at his guns in this one. We basically open on his biceps. <laughs> oh, yeah, we do. He insisted, apparently, for this movie that like his character's most defining trait is his refusal to wear sleeves, right? Yes, so much so. Spoiler alert, because we'll address it later in the movie. So much so that it made it into the spoken dialogue of the film. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely that. <laughs> now, and, and we can tell that he is or was a police officer because he's wearing his police ball cap damn it <laughs> say what you will about the right family but they are getting their money out of that police ball yeah, cap. No shit. <laughs> two for two films so far and then he starts flashing he's like looking at himself in the mirror he's super sad and then he starts flashing back to his wife who is wearing her canine unit shirt <laughs> also he's looking in the mirror again we've probably seen 20, 30, maybe 50 look in the mirror at yourself in sorrows throughout all these episodes. But the actor who plays the main character doesn't have object permanence. <laughs> so you watch him get lost in the mirror a little bit. He's like, uh, ah, who's that? No, nope, no, nope, me. It's me. Yeah, again. yeah, 100%. Oh. If you look at your face long enough. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, quick, draw a dot on his forehead in the mirror like they do to test an elephant's <laughs> sentience to see where he tries to clean it off. <laughs> There's no question that when Ashley leaves the house, she has to like put newspaper over the mirror so that he doesn't <laughs> bark at himself and not sleep. Yeah, so uh, so we see that. We see the flashback. And then he stares at a picture of her in case we haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> and isn't she, she's dressed as the police in the picture as well. So like every time we see her, basically, she's like, most times here, she's dressed as the police. Yes. Everything we see, this family has so much police merch. Like, are they sponsored by the police? Is that what's going on? Because there's everything in this house is either completely white decor in every single room mm-hmm. or it's police branded. Those are the two options yes. they've got for what's going on in this house. Well, so we determined when we did their first movie, Marsh, or our first foray into their movies, rather, <laughs> All of this is an outgrowth of the sex games that Ashley and David play. And I think that she has a police thing, right? So, right. Yeah. And he, and she's in the canine unit for him. So does he have a dog thing? Is that where that's going? <laughs> it is the official position of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC <laughs> that David has a dog thing. We're also trying to get David to beat Eli up. So there's... Yes, there's also we are, we're also doing a they, thing. Be, Marsh is the funny. only member of our cast you can't beat up, David, just in case you're keeping track at home. <laughs> All right, so then we get, I'm going to, I hate to say it this early in the film, but the most amazing thing I have ever seen in my life. All right. (laughs) Yep. So they need to establish that he is going to kill himself on Halloween, which they're going to do brilliantly by having him write the word death with exclamation marks 
on a calendar on Halloween. Yep. Mm. My notes are literally, that's the funniest thing we've ever seen. Hey, guys, that's by far the funniest thing I've ever seen. Oh, wow. <laughs> but yeah. I had nothing. I had nothing. I was just like, there it is. But here's the thing is that it gets funnier. Mm. It does. Because if you look at the goddamn calendar, you will see that he has misspelled the word death and had to cross it out and is now yes. doing take two. This is take two of the word death. But they didn't just get another calendar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what I love. This is, again, this is the budget serving thing. You know, he, he, they, they don't have it. Do we do we really need to dip into the budget to buy a whole second calendar for this retake? No, 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 it's fine. We'll just cross the word death out and then write it again. Like you, <laughs> like you forgot what else you're going to be there. It's fine. Don't worry about it. The thing is, it's even, if you look at it, this is a free promotional calendar. If yes, you pause. that's the thing. It's, it's free. It's a free one. It's got like a referral link on it for like, if you give this link to your friends and family, you can get money off. And I hate it when you're consuming media and then they randomly insert an ad with a referral code on in the middle of it. It's just so intrusive. Today's ad podcast is sponsored. Sponsored by, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So, yeah, so he writes death on his calendar, foreshadowing. And then we watch him look down the barrel of his gun, which I do not believe for a second is a prop gun. <laughs> Absolutely oh, not. No way. It's the scariest part of this movie <laughs> is watching this actor handle what I promise on the life of my son was a loaded gun. <laughs> it's got the safety on y'all. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. There's also right after this, we see him. He's got the bullets set out mm -hmm. and he's got his gun. And I was like, oh, my God, he's going to do a Russian roulette thing, except his gun is a bottom loading pistol, which is automatic. <laughs> so I was so excited for him to just be like, all right, nin, 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 bam. Oh, so sorry. Oh, wait, no yeah. spring loaded <laughs> shit. It's where we see on the desk as well. He's got like a business card holder or something with the word, but like shaped in the shape of a police badge with the word police on it. It's mm -hmm. like, does this guy keep forgetting what his job is? Does he have to have the word police <laughs> written on things so he remembers? Does that happen with, does Andrew have lots of things in his house that say lawyer on them just in case he forgets? <laughs> it's just the most shaped like briefcases. Eli's house filled with signs that just say dick jokes everywhere just in case he forgets what he does. <laughs> okay, well, that's a bad example. Well, yeah. I do actually have the, yeah. So, and also we should point out that inside that card dispenser, he's got these little biblical motivational speaker cards, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And he keeps pulling them out and they've got different little Bible quotes. And of course they're the fucking Bible. So they're lame ass quotes. Like I'm God, I exist. You know, that's about as, as good as they can do. <laughs> and yeah, and then we pan over all his bullets as if to say, look how many bullets I've got. Nearly half a dozen. Yeah. And then the music gets super intense. But all he's doing is microwaving pigs in a blanket. <laughs> yep. Drinking red wine and microwaving pigs in a blanket. Truly, madly, deeply, the Ethan Wright story. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw that in your notes. I saw this in your notes before I watched the film. And I was confused because what he's cooking there is sausage rolls. And then I realized you call pigs in, you call sausage rolls pigs in blankets yep, in America. We call them sausage rolls. They're so the sausages rolled in pastry. Because we call pigs in blankets something that I assume you guys don't have which is tiny little sausages that you have at Christmas that are wrapped in bacon and then roasted. Oh, fuck. Which you must have those, that surely, because they're the most American thing I can think of, but those are pigs in blankets. I've never no, had that don't before. Have that. And that I would sounds, love that. That sounds like the Heath Enright story right They are there. the absolute best. You have to have them. I mean, not you, Eli, obviously, but you have to have them. <laughs> but so wait, so wait, so those are pigs in blankets made of pig, though. That's oh, terrifying. Pigs, that's true. <laughs> Pigs in blank pig blankets. Yeah. Pigs in pig blankets <laughs> is the Well, here's what's so sad about that though, right? Because now we know that pigs in a blanket's the American version must have been someone who went to England, had pigs in blanket. They were like, those are fucking great. Got back to America where they were like, we should make them here in America. And someone was like, what do you think we can afford bacon around our hot dogs? And they were like, no, you're right. Let's go with something much more reasonable like pretzel dough. <laughs> <laughs> But okay, so but eventually the music makes sense, right? Because 
Someone's outside robbing his shed, and he's got to go get the drop on him. <laughs> Isn't this every redneck, overarmed redneck's dream? Yeah. Is some I knew if I stared out my window long enough and checked next door every fourteen seconds, I'd eventually discover someone taking my big old pair of shears. Yeah, right, my post hole digger. All right. And now we're going to get Eli's. Well, we're going to get both Eli and Marsha's best work, right? <laughs> In the form of this robber. Mm. So I was worried initially because I thought this is good. I said, I wrote my notes. Is this going to be one of those stand your ground things? And then we see that the robber is black. And I was like, oh, it's definitely going to be one of those stand your ground things. And then we've got to throw some asterisks around some of the words in that initial sentence there. Like the robber is black. Yeah. Uh, sort of. He, they, they went blackface for the movie, guys, and poorly. Mm. Like, they not even classy blackface. Nope. They have a guy in a black guy mask. Yes. I, and I, I would venture, I think it's one of his children. Oh, I was thinking it was his wife. I was thinking it was Ashley, but... Yeah, it's either Ashley or one of the kids. There's not a, a clear height comparison. But yeah, it's in a very poorly made rubber black guy mask I assume purchased from the KKK's very own spirit Halloween <laughs> <laughs> it is rough that is it is a rough depiction or it, it's not a depiction made with any kindness to anybody at all no. yeah it is not a good mask no and we're showing it from a distance as and, and and in the dark so that maybe you won't realize it's just a mask but it's also like because it's either his wife or his daughters in the mask they've got it someone else to do the voice right afterwards <laughs> and it is not an african-american dude so much as mm -mm. a white guy doing his african-american voice yeah and also he doesn't seem to know the timing right like he's just saying things that don't necessarily line up with what david owen wright is saying no like like he's like he was pre-recorded and the kid was whoever's in the the mask is just mashing buttons on the uh, on the playback <laughs> at random <laughs> forget you forget you partner partner do a lot of black people call each other partner when they're trying to like rob uh, strangers no idea right no i guarantee you from the very bottom of my heart that was written in the script as the n-word and the white guy doing the black voice was like all right this is too far even for me and she was like <laughs> Fine. If we're not going to get the gritty realism I wrote into my script, you can call him partner, right? Or partner. I don't know. What do they say? Yeah. So they 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 talk back and forth in the fucking vein of a guy who like is on the phone, but you don't realize he's on the phone, and so you think he's talking to you for way too long. <laughs> they talk like that for a little while, but the conversation they're having is the guy's threatening to shoot him, and David Owen Wright's character is going like, "Doesn't matter, man. I'm suicidal. Go ahead, shoot me, shoot me. I bet you don't have the guts to shoot me." And then, of course, he grabs the gun and he wrestles it away. And now he's in control because, again, this is the fantasy of every overarmed redneck, right? The only thing I can watch more than Christian movies is fat white men showing you how they would disarm someone with a gun in more <laughs> and more. Silly. But you but you twist the gun around and then you're th you clasp it between your thighs and then you do a very simple back roll and then the gun, I have the gun now. Honestly, if he had just gone meh, 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 and the gun had floated into his hand, I would have I would have admired it. I would have admired the attempt. And this this whole bit is is baffling to me because I, at this point I'd read a brief synopsis, you know, the kind of the the, the trailer synopsis of like, oh, it's a a guy who ha, you know is about to kill himself until a kid comes into his life. So I obviously thought this short person in a mask is very clearly a delinquent teen he's going to have to rescue and he's going to now he's wrestled the gun off them he's going to take the mask off and then we're going to find out that it's a white kid so i was still expecting that to be what happens here and it very much doesn't the person just runs off and we never see them again and that's when i realized there was the budget conversation do we do we actually have to pay like go into the budget to pay for a black actor no no it's fine we'll just get my kid or my wife in a hoodie give them a two pack <laughs> mask and make sure we yes. film them real fuzzy and we can cover this it's fine yeah oh this is, so this was your first realization of just how bad it was going to be this so, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't think for a second it could be as racist as it actually is <laughs> i was giving them the benefit of the doubt yeah the old brexit error we call that <laughs> <laughs> well so but here's the thing is that having watched one of their movies before, 
before. My first note after this scene was, I'm calling it now. I bet this scene never matters. Yep. And it doesn't. It doesn't. We never hear from this guy again. The, he gets, the, it, but David Owen Wright ends up with the robber's gun, but he already had a gun that we saw earlier. So this second gun never matters. Nothing about this scene matters. This was just there because he's like, and then I'd probably beat up a black guy. But, but why would he beat up a robber if he was literally about to kill himself? I just, yeah. If he's like, well, I'm about to shoot myself, but hang on. What if somebody steals my garden shears? I best <laughs> take care of that first. <laughs> yeah. The only context that scene doesn't make sense in is the only context this movie has given us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's true. Right. So, okay, so that's over. He goes back inside. We flash back to more wife memories. We watch her artfully sniff the flowers in their tiny little front yard. Look, I know that putting women in fridges is a movie trope, but Ashley Wright writes these movies. She directs these movies. Yes. So I have yet to see a woman put herself into the fridge with quite this <laughs> ferocity. <laughs> <laughs> right. And he does this like weird, I'm going to go ahead and say spoken word poem. Yes. Uh -huh. for, about her. Which again, she wrote. Mm -hmm. She wrote this poem for her husband to say. <laughs> so she did not write this movie. I would never, I would normally just go along with you on the joke, but it's going to be very important later. I'm going to go ahead and just put that out there right now. She contributed. She to absolutely the contributed to the writing <laughs> yeah. of this movie. Yes, but she's part of the writing team. I know what you're tinting at, but <laughs> <laughs> I would say, and I'll, I'll throw this out there. The inferior writer on that writing team. <laughs> <laughs> right, but he's but he's going for poetic, and by poetic we mean like he he literally says the word, but as a flower, my love has faded away. Right? Yeah. Just like flowers do. Yeah, they fade away. But also he's talking about how it hasn't. Like the whole point of it is that his love hasn't faded away. <laughs> he just they don't know. All right. Then we cut to pumpkins, but ominously. <laughs> what a torn shift it is. Because it's like, he's like, yeah, my, my, my love has faded away. We see a pumpkin. It's like, no, 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 pumpkins. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what? So, okay. So then we cut to a couple of kids in masks, trick or treating. And this scene was preempted by the conversation. Hey, should we use masks that completely cover the kids' mouths and make the, all their dialogue sound like Tom Hardy's Bane whispering to a librarian? <laughs> and of course, the, the response was, oh, for sure. Yeah, no, that's exactly the way to go. So we watched two kids go <laughs> for fucking three minutes. Yeah. And then they go and find another kid who's not wearing a mask. So we get a one one person conversation. Ah, oh. and the thing is, we just seen him like tackling an intruder who was very clearly in a mask. And then we cut to two kids wearing masks. And I and I immediately think, oh, okay. So it definitely was a kid in a mask because they wouldn't <laughs> immediately show us two kids in masks if that wasn't <laughs> what we'd just seen. And what, but it's not. It's not, They've nope. not thought of that. They've not put all the two bits together. They just have access to masks, apparently. They've got mask money and they want to put it on camera. Yeah, I think a big part of why they made this movie is that they happened upon a hell of a score out behind a closed up Halloween adventures, right? Yeah. Marsh, I, in order for you to really follow along with this movie in the way we need you to for this review, <laughs> could you do just a little bit of heroin at the next commercial break? <laughs> you don't have to do a lot, but just enough so that, you know, that you're, you're blinking out every two to three seconds. This yeah. is a really... Should I go back in the bathroom and in inhale more of that bleachy? Like? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Should I yeah, go back and do that? That would be I've helpful. a little bit of it going on, but I can top that up. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but what we eventually discern from this inaudible dialogue is that these two kids are inviting a third young girl out to go trick or treating with them, but she can't. She has to make dinner for her granny and she doesn't have a costume. Yeah. They make this invitation by saying, we're going to raid all the candy mm. in the neighborhood, but it very much, because they say it a bunch of times through their mask, it very much sounds like they say, we're going to rape all the candy in the neighborhood. <laughs> That's what I heard too. And it freaked me the fuck out. <laughs> all right, I'm going to be honest with you. All I heard was <laughs> like fucking Charlie Brown's mom getting kidnapped or something. I had to go to you, you guys' notes to figure out what the fuck they were talking about. <laughs> but okay, so meanwhile, Suicidal cop is staring at his gun some more. It's it's Halloween night. It's death night, right? Yeah, and he's, he's what he's supposed to be doing here is figuring out how he's going to shoot himself. But again, this actor is 
and like genuinely one of the dumbest humans ever captured on film. So his two options he uses to show that are between the clefts of his beard and from far away, a la a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And he, he is at this point like staring directly down the barrel of the gun, but with a kind of confused expression, like he's trying to work out where the bullets went. Yeah. I know it's in here somewhere, but I can't see them. I don't understand. Yeah. So as he's doing this, though, there's a knock on the door. It's the girl who didn't have a costume out trick or treating. And this is where we've had like piano music in the background dramatic. And when we get the knock on the door and he decides not to kill himself, the piano music stops completely immediately and it's just silence. Like the pianist is disappointed that he hasn't gone through it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you promised I would get to play piano to your husband killing himself, actually. <laughs> Tricked me again. So she knocks on the door to trick or treat and he says, and I'm sure this is very important to both him and his intended viewers, he says, I'm sorry, I don't celebrate Halloween. And I'm like, I bet it's because demons. I bet that's why. <laughs> he says about how he's normally got the lights off as well. And I've got to say, I'm completely with him on a lights off Halloween policy. It's like, sorry, adorable child from next door, but I just find this whole transaction like impossibly awkward <laughs> and I want no part in it. So skip over, go to the next house. Don't, don't come to me. Oh, my <laughs> wife is furious that we're not going to be able to give candy out because uh, we'll be at QED. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. We're flying back early so we can give out candy. <laughs> so, yeah, so he's like, sorry, little girl, you caught me right in the middle of my suicide. Well, you know what? I maybe do have some candy bars because look at me. I'm the kind of guy who has spare candy bars. <laughs> <laughs> and he asked where her, her costume is. And she says, you know, I'm poor, so I, I, we couldn't afford a costume. And look, I grew up poor. As a kid who grew up poor, like, you're never more than a black bin liner away from a witch costume. That's the, that's right, the light right. hack. Or a fucking sheet away from a ghost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and he's like, and where are your parents? And I wanted to say, you know, I, I'm poor. I couldn't afford parents either. <laughs> like, the movie. The movie couldn't afford to pay actors to play my right, parents. Yeah. And that's why I'm an orphan. Yeah, because it's like, where's your costume? I couldn't afford one. I'm too poor. Well, where's your candy bucket? Well, I couldn't afford one. I was too poor. Too poor for a fucking... Pillowcase is what we used as a kid. <laughs> and then he's like, well, where's your jacket? She's like, I couldn't afford one. It's too, I'm too poor. And then he's like, where are your parents? And so, yeah, that'd be in the yeah. That's yeah. Where else would you expect it to be? The SAT answer is that she couldn't afford them because <laughs> she's too poor. Yeah. <laughs> also, I just want to say, there's no way that this family doesn't already own white sheets for a ghost costume. <laughs> so, you know. With eye holes. I'm just saying. They might not have one that fits her yet, but <laughs> I think they probably do. Yeah, so, but he's like, well, let me get you some candy and I'll also get you a jacket. So he comes and he gives her a jacket. He's like, my wife has a jacket, an old jacket that would fit you. And it, it's like, it's a Michael Kors designer jacket. That's what that is. That's like a $400 jacket oh, at really? least. It's, it's Michael Kors, yeah. Because we see her walking in it and it's got Kors written down the back. So that's like a designer jacket he's given her. Well, that's nice of him. I was too distracted by the fact that this little girl very obviously doesn't know how to put on a jacket. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> he hands it to her and she hangs it off herself as though she were a coat rack. It was very upsetting. <laughs> yeah, it takes her a long time to realize the arms go through the armholes. Yeah. I guess she's too poor to have ever had a jacket. As well. <laughs> but also, so he decides to give her some money too, which is, okay, this movie is never going to acknowledge just the fact that pedophilia exists, right? Because like mm -mm. Th this whole thing is like, oh, a little girl has showed up on my step. Let me give her, let me ply her with chocolate and money, you know? Yeah, ply is definitely the word for mm. the, the interaction between these two characters. And he just keeps going back in the house. So he he yes. goes into the house to get a candy and comes back and then goes back in the house to give, get, a, get a, a jacket and comes back and then goes... He, like, how many more trips is he going to keep doing in? Like, what else is he gonna, he's going to give a what he's got, which I assume is police merchandise, some bullets <laughs> and some blackcurrant wine. <laughs> but, sorry, little girl, have you eaten? Uh, would you like some pigs in blankets delivered one at a time? <laughs> I'll take the trip the entire way. Would you like spaghetti one noodle at a time? Here, hold this bowl. I'll fill it with rice. We're going to be here for a couple hours. And we also, he, this when he gives her the money as well, this was another budget note because like, so do we really have to get like a decent amount of actual genuine cash on hand in order to give it to her on screen? No, no, that's no, fine. We'll just quickly move two ones near the camera in an extreme close up and yes. the, the viewers will get the gist. Yeah, 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 exactly. I'm not paying the 99 cent McDonald's ATM fee for your <laughs> film, actually. <laughs> So and and like, yeah, this is how poorly written and executed this movie is. Instead of having him just come back to the door with a handful of stuff, they have him go back in over and over and over again. <laughs> and meanwhile, someone 
it, so they're what they're going for is that someone's watching the little girl from around the corner of the house, right? But they fuck it up because it's supposed to be like we're looking through that person's eyes. So we look around the corner and then we duck back. But the little girl looks directly at the camera when it comes around, right? Mm-hmm. So you're left going like, so she knows that person is there. She that She's in on something with that person. Mm. Yeah. Because what we see is she makes direct eye contact with us. And as soon as she looks away, we, the camera, then hide. Yes. So it very much looks like they're colluding. Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. So then he comes back, gives her the jacket that doesn't remotely fit her, gives her some money and all of that other stuff. I want him to come back with a, a, a costume and a big orange pumpkin bucket or something. <laughs> so, but then he says, anytime you need anything, little girl that I just met, come see me, a creepy middle-aged man that lives nearby and lives alone. <laughs> yes. And who's just about to kill himself. Yes. yes. As far as we know, it has not changed his mind. So, like, you know, if you need anything, like, you know, a front row seat to a suicide that will traumatize and scar you for life. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I wrote in my notes, if you ever need anything, come by my house and find me dead. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You'd actually be doing me a favor because if you if you come by pretty often, I probably won't have started to stink yet. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so she leaves down this dark and spooky road. He goes to his bed and thanks God for sending him a little girl that kept him from committing suicide tonight. He even says it. He's like, well, you got me for one more night. Like, you just told the little girl to come back. <laughs> you yeah. twisted fuck. <laughs> even his bedroom is all completely white decor. It's like they're trying to emphasize the vanilla. You're like, look, look, look we, we, don't need, we don't need lights on. Just have some white bedspread and that will scatter all the light that God wants us to have during. That's, that's what that's for. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I thought he was going to kill himself on this bed. I was like, oh, man, on the sheets. So I feel like the tub yeah. or the garage with some trash bags laid out. <laughs> He's like, are you taking us through your Pinterest board? Okay. <laughs> right, I, 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 I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. In movies like this, you can just stick your act breaks wherever the fuck you want them. Uh, it's not like you're going to fuck up the rhythm of the story. So we're going to take one here. But we'll be back in a minute with even more of Halloween Hero. You look like your beard is trying to escape. Okay, okay. Uh, your old Nintendo collection is stupid. Mm. All right, okay, interesting. Well, I could have told you that. Hey, hey, fellas, what you working on there? Oh, I'm just testing out my new Mino meter for our roasts for vulgarity for charity. That's right. We want to make sure our roasts are just the right amount of sassy. Wait, wait, wait. what's vulgarity for charity? Bulgarity for Charity is our annual charity drive jointly produced by Puzzle and a Thunderstorm and Cognitive Dissonance Podcast, the collaborators on Citation Needed. It runs from November 1st through Thanksgiving and it benefits Modest Needs, a charity that gives emergency grants to folks who are at risk of slipping into poverty and for whom no other source of immediate help is available. Oh, wow. And I bet a lot of people could use that kind of help right now. They sure could. Plus, Modest Needs negotiates directly with the folks who people owe money to and contributes from its own general fund. So it saves the people who need money and cuts out all the sketchiness that can happen with other fundraising platforms. All right. That sounds like a great charity and everything. But what's in it for me? I'm so glad you asked, Heath, because that's where we and our friends in the podcastiverse come in. All you have to do is donate $50 or more, and you can ask us to roast a person of your choice. It can be a politician, your racist Uncle Steve, or as has been the tradition for our fundraiser for three years running, you can have Heath roast your dog. Just send proof of your donation to vulgarityforcharity at gmail.com. That's vulgarity for the word, not the number, charity at gmail.com, along with who you want us to roast, and you could get the asshole of your choice the roasting they deserve. Don't forget to include a picture if that person isn't famous. And let us know who you want to do the roast. We'll have special guests like Cara Santa Maria, Michael Marshall, and maybe even a surprise guest or two. Ooh, but is there any way you can guarantee that your roast makes it on the air? You sure can. We'll be choosing 100 random donors and our top 100 donors. So if you donate, you can either give us a bunch of money and guarantee it that way, or donate as soon as possible when November 1st rolls around. That's right. Early donors have a much better chance of being randomly selected. Once again, that's 50 bucks to modestneeds.org. Send the proof to vulgarityforcharity at gmail.com. Vulgarity for charity. Make Heath roast a bunch of dogs again. Absolutely not. No, 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 no. Sorry, Heath. Minometer says it's still funny. Ha! Stupid Minometer. Hi, I'm Phony D. 
Here for Tony D's house, a suicidal movie, guys. Did your wife and or children die in a tragic tragicking? Well, have no fear, because I've got rock bottom braces on everything a suicidal protagonist needs to get their life back on track. We got guns with a single bullet, three quarters empty bottles of whiskey, and framed photographs of dead people in a variety of sizes and styles. Just listen to these satisfied customers. When my wife and son were eaten by wolverines and I gave up being a professional tennis player once and for all, I had no idea how to fill my days. Now, thanks to Tony D's house of suicidal movie guys, I can fill every waking moment until a down on their luck tennis team needs my help, pressing a gun barrel to my temple. Thanks, Tony D. Tony D's house of suicidal movie guys. God damn it, you gave up that life. For now. <laughs> And we're back from more of this shit. When we last left off, Rachel, that's the little girl's name, was walking down a scary road late at night. And we're going to rejoin the action with her still doing that. We're going to watch that for, in this scene alone, 50 seconds. Nothing happens. Right. right. Yeah. And she's trick-or-treating down what appears to be like an abandoned country lane. Yes. <laughs> she's, not, she's not good at this. She's a novice at this. She's not, <laughs> not figuring out the tactics of trick-or-treating just yet. Yes. Yeah, but also... She's being followed as best we can tell because, like, we are the camera following her. Mm -hmm. We're looking from the, the creepy person's eyes, but it's just a very long, very straight road. So, like, if she turned around at any point, she'd just see some dude stood in the middle of the road. Right. There would very clearly be a guy there. There's yeah. nothing to hide behind. <laughs> Can't get lost in the crowd. Yeah. I wanted to turn around and then the camera just like, like leans very slowly towards the bushes and then back again. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we've already established that we're invisible or something because she even looking right at us, she can't see us. And then we cut to Michael drinking more alcohol, right? <laughs> this time it is, we can actually see it. It's very clearly peach schnapps. Yes. yes. He's got Dekaipa peach schnapps and he's got a botanical grapefruit and rose vodka uh, <laughs> as well. And I thought, God, will his misery drinking just get more and more like niche and elaborate like in a couple of <laughs> scenes time? Is he going to be like sadly making himself like a white Russian and just, <laughs> just gently weeping as he does bar flare? You know, the Heath Enright story. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so we, we cut between him drinking and her walking. The music is pretty sure the walking's getting intense. And then a creepy guy grabs her. Oh, also, sorry, right before she gets grabbed by the creepy guy, we watch this little girl in real time figure out how to put on a jacket. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's intense. It's it's like watching someone fight an octopus that they were in a relationship with. <laughs> <laughs> But Michael hears her scream and he goes running to help her and beat up another person in a mask. How did he hear her scream? She's meant to have like walked certainly enough time away for him to go pour himself a drink, sit down and be drinking it. And we've seen her walking like a decent amount of distance. Has he got like magic hearing? We've watched a minute and a half of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's got magic hearing from the peach schnapps. Why else would anyone <laughs> drink peach schnapps yes. except for the superpowers it gives? No, that's that's fair. That's fair. So, yeah, so he, he runs up, he saves the little girl, he punches the, the guy in the mask a number of times. Oh, yay. This is great. So, Marsh, you weren't here for Bible and Bigfoot. Bible hmm. and Bigfoot, he was very clearly in the monkey costume, so he had to punch himself. This movie, they were like, all right, well, you know, they was podcasters made fun of us. So, Ashley, you're going to be in the bad guy costume because this is very clearly him punching his wife. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 100%. She's got a different hoodie and a different wig. Also, and I know it's a small thing, but did you notice that the cropping on this fight scene, just from the top, the black bar at the top of the screen, cut midway down the screen several times, yes. erratically? Uh, but why? What was that? What happened there? Yeah, it's not like they were shooting on old timey film and it's like, ah, oh, it got burned by the light of the projectors. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I thought, are they trying to crop out his wife's face? Cause, yes. Like, he do, He clearly, we, the way this fight is going, he's just like punching off camera rather than any sort of like choreographed scene. Like, this guy, his reluctance to hit what is clearly his wife is downright unbiblical by this point. <laughs> They're going through a long way to avoid him having to hit his wife. Well, and then another staple of Wright family films is that very often when they can't afford the prop, they'll just give you the sound effect, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So we hear him handcuff this guy. We hear him. Now, first of all, I'm not buying for a second this couple doesn't own handcuffs, but also like <laughs> he heard a little girl screaming and then ran out of the house. So either he just 
stopped and picked up the handcuffs along the way, mm. or he just already had them on hand for his drunken suicide. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but then he fires his gun, but only near the bad guy. He's he's a good dude. He's not going to kill the guy. But it's so confusing because there's this very clear moment where he like got, he finally gets the gun away from the bad guy. He points the gun at his head. We see the gun shot in the blackout, and I was like, oh, a murder. And he's like, the, okay, warning shot. Yes. Yeah, then why blackout? Why do the blackout <laughs> in that way? Yeah. So now I, I will say, though, they've upgraded from Bible, the badge and Bigfoot because they did find an Arby's that would let them take as many ketchup packets as they wanted. For this <laughs> yeah. Day. Yeah. He's immediately home. And he's, he's got to really clean some of that brownish goo off his hands. Yeah, well, Arby's sauce, I guess it was. They were out of ketchup. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so, but he washes, goes home to wash the blood off of his hand. And by the way, this shot is very clearly just here. So we have another chance to see his guns, right? Yeah. Sweet, sweet buys. And then, so we head back with a little girl. We go to her house where she's sitting with her grandma. Right. But the thing is, if she lives with the grandma, won't we have to like dip in the budget and hire an old lady in order to play her? <laughs> no, no, it'll be fine. Wife, hoodie, glasses, wig, fuzzy. Done. Done. Yep. And old lady mask. We don't really <laughs> see the old lady mask until much later in the film, but this is a woman where this is Ashley wearing an old lady mask. It's amazing. Yes, it is. Okay. But we have to talk about the worst part about this character. And I mean, genuinely the least pleasant, which is that Ashley decided that her old lady voice was going to be speaking like this for the rest of yes. the movie yep. for the remaining 30 minutes of this 51 minute film something like 18 minutes of it will be pauses between grandma's words right i'm gonna absolutely blow your minds here but because when it gets to the credits and we're thrown way further forward here but in the credits it says who plays the grandma and it's not ashley it's someone called maggie hayes who's ashley's mom who is genuinely the little girl's grandma. She is genuinely a grandma. So why did they have to do all of this stuff to make her look like a grandma when she actually is a grandma? That is literally the kid's grandma. Right. So I, first of all, I think I don't believe the credits, right? I think yeah, that they're I think lying. The credits to try to are think. lies. I think okay, that's fair. That fair. I, I think that Maggie Hayes did the voice, right? Uh, Just because they, they also list somebody as having done the voice for the robber for the guy in the black guy mask or whatever but I still think that was Ashley in the mask and they're just crediting the person who did the voice oh okay that makes perfect sense I, I take it back your your mind can remain unblown no I had the same thought for so long I'm like but then she would just be the grandma why she's just a grandma <laughs> yes. yes she's even that little girl's grandma it's right. perfect <laughs> casting yeah but yeah, no, Grandma had Bridge Club. There's no way she could afford the day and a <laughs> half it would take to shoot this movie. She didn't have the time. Yeah. Yeah, so, but Grandma is is asking her how her trick-or-treating night went along the creepy country road. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Rachel buries the lead a bit here. <laughs> she really does. <laughs> she does. I was like, uh, she has just been freed from, I assume, child slavery. And she's like, well, it had its ups and downs. I think I'll start with the positives. I like mm. to do a little compliment sandwich. <laughs> but I think we all had what she says. Like the verbatim was, I met a nice man and he gave me some candy and some money and a jacket. That was the good part. Yes. Now, first of all, that's about the hero of this film and not a child predator, because <laughs> that is how you describe a child predator. Oh, without context, that is a terrifying yeah. sentence. <laughs> and at no point, like the kid ends with, that was the good part. And at no point does the granny say, okay, what was the bad part? Because it sounds like that is fucking dangerous stuff here. Just yes. ignores it. Yeah. No, grandma's like, nice. Free <laughs> yeah, nice. free jacket. Score. <laughs> Yeah, and she's like, but the bad news is some man tried to grab me, but then the nice man rescued me and I ran away, right? And then grandma's like, so what happened to the bad man? And the little girl has to go like, I just, I just fucking said I ran away. How the hell would I know? <laughs> Stupid. I ran away. What part of that do you not understand, grandma? <laughs> and of course, grandma's reaction to this is, Two things simultaneously, one might say counteractively. Oh, the world is so bad. 
thank God for you yes, know, for barely. God's godness. <laughs> and yes, that is true. <laughs> she also says, "I don't know if you guys caught this." She says, "Sometimes I wish your parents were still here." Mm. Yes. Sometimes. Sometimes. I wanted to list the times she doesn't. That's what I wanted her to come out with. Well, it'd be awesome if we found out later that she killed the parents. You know, sometimes I think maybe I did the wrong thing. Yeah. And also, by the way, so again, this this voice is dubbed in after the fact. So like Rachel is answering our questions way before those pausey ass answers or questions come. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the, the sound is totally fucked up in this whole scene. Like the music is on so loud. And my theory is that the dialogue originally has just one of the parents off camera doing the grandma's lines so the kid can react to them. But then they realize like they were too stupid to do that so quietly it wasn't picked up by the mic. And they're like, oh, <gasps> all we can do is crank the music right up to try and cover and hope that this kid is loud. Enough. I think you're right. Yeah. Because whenever the kid's talking, you can barely hear her over the music. I think you're exactly right, yeah. dude. <laughs> we also, we see a cut of the granny as well. For the, the, the closest we get to seeing the granny's face is the camera looks directly at the granny and her eyes are in perfect focus, but somehow everything from the nose down is completely blurred. Yes. So they've applied a blur filter, but they've applied it just in a straight line, a directly, perfectly horizontal <laughs> yes. line across ear to ear, across the nose, and everything south of that is blurred. Oh, listeners, it is genuinely difficult to give you a clear idea of how poorly made these movies are. So, okay, so now we cut to Michael. He's in bed reading the Bible. He just can't get that 10-year-old girl out of his head. <laughs> yep, the protagonist. Oh, Jesus but then he he dreams of his wife memories. So we go back into a little flashback of the day she died. Yeah. And he's given, she's getting ready. She's like, oh, I got to go to a regular police car just like every other night. And he's like, well, don't forget to wear your bulletproof vest. And she basically responds with, I mean, what's going to happen? I'm going to die tragically. Oh, don't be silly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Because like. First of all, I don't buy that what she's wearing is a genuine police canine unit T-shirt. It looks like fan merchandise yes, uh, that they bought from the gift shop or something. Yes. She's looking for her belt keepers. I have no idea what belt keepers are. But she says, she it's all right. I don't need to worry about a bulletproof vest. I'm only going out for a quick, quote, canine sniff. <laughs> I don't think that's a police term. <laughs> And he says, well, you know, don't forget your magazines and your bullets. And she goes, oh, OK. Like she's forgotten her packed lunch or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so and, oh, by the way, we should point out that he's wearing his I stand for the flag shirt to this. Oh, God, yeah, he so is. Rough. Fuck. Yeah, he is. Outfitting provided by the commercials in between Alex Jones's mental breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, by the way, if I'm not mistaken, the image on that shirt is a flag and in the foreground is a person kneeling with a gun, right? It's like as as if in prayer. Anyway, so yeah, but he makes sure that she takes her bulletproof vest. Yeah, because he says to her, you know, well, take the vest, at, at least throw it over, your, over the top if you need to. But as opposed to what? Putting it underneath your clothing? They go over the top. That's, that's how they're designed. <laughs> you don't see people put the, the vest on first and then dress over the top of that. But can I just say they absolutely should? Yeah, no. I would love to see a bunch of weird Michelin man looking cops in just full suits walking around. Hello, citizen. But instead, she she does take the jacket, but she like just puts it over her shoulder like a city trader carrying his jacket in the 80s. Yeah. Yes. Just over one finger. I said she throws her bulletproof vest over her shoulder like a jaunty sash. Yeah, right, right. Now she's going to tie it around her waist or something. Yeah. So then he goes in for a hug, right? But the way we're shooting this, like, from her perspective. So he goes in for a hug on the camera and they have to cut quick when, as they realize that doesn't work in real time. <laughs> so, okay. So then we cut to like her out late that night with her gun drawn. Now, I know you would have thought from the previous scene that we were doing this flashback in black and white. We're not anymore. Mm -hmm. I guess they realized that didn't work well with an unlit shot at night outdoors. <laughs> so suddenly we're in full color again. Oh, and I, and I love this. She's just stood completely out in the open with her gun. But don't worry, it's perfectly fine because she's got all 180 of the degrees covered, which is all the degrees, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. That's all the degrees you need to check. We watch this, what appears to be a sentient gun sneak up behind her. It's the silliest thing you've ever seen. Yeah. Right? It might as well have googly eyes written yes. on it. Yes. It's Elmer Fudd. He, she gets Elmer Fudded to death. <laughs> she totally does. 
<laughs> yeah, so somebody comes up behind her with a shotgun. Or I, again, all we see is the silhouette of a shotgun. So yes, if it was just a shotgun that was mad at her, I guess that would also fit with what we see. <laughs> and then she gets shot in the back. And then he wakes up, of course, with the sound of the gunshot still ringing in his ears. But which him is waking up? Because in my uh, when I first watched this, I thought, is this the him that just went to bed reading the Bible? Because if so, he's gone to sleep in bed and woken up on the couch. And that's when I realized it was the flashback him, but it wasn't shot in the same color as the flashback him. <laughs> no. So it was impossible to tell that it was the flashback him. Right, right. So, okay, so flashback's over. Now we cut to Rachel having lunch with Grandma, but they're so poor that all she has to eat is an apple. <laughs> an apple and a dinner roll. A yeah, roll. <laughs> right, yeah. It's not how being poor works, but okay. <laughs> I, I love that through these people's eyes that you just have less of the same food. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, it's just like, well, you know how you get a two-piece. Now, because you're poor, you would just have the forks and the knives and the containers of the KFC. <laughs> And they, they don't understand how being poor works. They genuinely don't. Because, like, for, for one, they've got giving away designer jacket money knocking around. Mm -hmm. So, like, all Granny does in every sentence is complain about money, which isn't really how poverty works. So, like, you, you don't spend every moment of your life complaining that you don't have money. Yeah, talking about your poverty. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. And we do see a little bit of the grandma, and the grandma does look a lot like she's suffering from a catastrophic cosmetic surgery failure. Yeah. That's what I think is happening to her, yeah. So, okay, so, the, so, but grandma warns her, warns Rachel at this point that they might just have to lose their house and move into a homeless shelter. Yeah. Because that's how being poor works. Yeah, she applied for Section 8 housing, but the list is so long. I was like, grandma's going to explain how the list is all filled up with robbers, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, <Jesus Christ. laughs> She's like, I'm trying my best. All we can do is pray. So, you know, not trying your not best. Not trying your best. Not trying at all. No. And, and by definition, not trying. Yeah, and Rachel doesn't want to be homeless, darn it. But if she doesn't have, and this is so silly, they're like, you know, well, I have until Friday to pay the rent or we have to move to the homeless shelter. And I'm like, okay, so that's the movie's ticking clock. But no, they will not pay the rent. No, mm -hmm. right? No, no, they won't. And this this scene has the best PS. His grandma goes, but I'm dying anyway. So, you know, yes. it's fine for me. You're, yeah. you're fucked, let me tell you, because you're going to be around for a while. I'm, I'm going to be poor till like, I don't know, two weeks from now. <laughs> she says at the end of the scene, just apropos of nothing. Also, I only have six to 12 months left to live. <laughs> yeah, and the kid is upset, which is like, okay, is so that means this is the first time the kid has heard this. So grandma has chosen to share that information this way. Like, oh, how, how best to break it to her about it? Oh, I've got it, I've got it. <laughs> Over a lovely dinner of apple and bread roll. Yes. Just after burdening her with all of my crushing debt. That is the perfect time to introduce <laughs> my mortality. So, okay. So we haven't really gotten a good look at David Owen Wright's sweet ass Jeep with the rough country sticker on the back of it. <laughs> Fuck yeah, rough country. He doesn't know, does he? He doesn't know that he has rough cunt written on the back of his car. <laughs> That's probably the best part is that someone was like, you want me to write the words rough cunt and then two other letters on the back of your car? And he was like, yep, because I'm so cool. And he's like, right. oh, yeah, oh, no, yeah, no, because you're cool. Yeah, that's sure. exactly why I suggest it. So, <laughs> so, yeah, so we see him getting out of his rough country Jeep and Rachel comes to check on him, right? And he's like, I see you got home safe. And she's like, yeah. And he goes, sorry about that. <laughs> what? Are you sorry for but yeah, and then and then we have to address the fact that he's not had sleeves at any point in the film. <laughs> mm. Yeah, he's like, is that jacket keeping you warm? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, I never get cold. I wear sleeveless t-shirts all year round. In fact, my wife cuts all the sleeves off my shirts for me. And I wrote in my notes, I deeply spiritually believe this to be true about the actor as well mm. as the character. <laughs> you can't make that up. That has to be real. Yeah, they, they could not make that up. Yeah, he explains like, even in winter, I don't get, she's in a full winter coat, a full winter puffer jacket. Right. He says like, you know, even in winter, I don't get cold. And he's having to talk loudly over all the birds that we hear chirping in the background because it's very clearly like spring or something. Yeah, right, exactly. In fact, he even says, you know, um, but you know, it's only the very beginning of fall, so it's not that cold right now. It's like, that's summer. That is the hottest, the very beginning of fall. You're talking about the end of summer. <laughs> right, yeah. The hottest of the seasons. So yeah, but then, so the little girl tells him that her, her grandma is sick and the doctor says she's going to die soon. And Michael immediately comes back with, well, you know, sometimes God murders our loved ones, but what are you going to do? You're going to have to still worship him and love him, huh? And she's like, yep, that's 
makes entirely internally logical sense. <laughs> Absolutely. And then he goes, okay, well, I need to leave now. Yes, I got shit to do. I can't see you standing here talking about your dying grandma all fucking day or anything. But it's yeah. also because they didn't know how to end this. Like, they didn't think they could just cut. So they were like, say goodbye to the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's the first time I've ever seen an actor well anyway is way out of a scene. I should be going. But it's not the last time. We will see that he'll do this at least yes. another time. Yeah, yep. this actor very obviously insisted like he's saying the current date. He was like, people, <laughs> if the lights go out, people will think maybe I disappeared forever. You know, you got to <laughs> tell them that I will be leaving that time and or place. So, all right, so then we watch him drink more of the alcohol to the point where I thought like, you know, I think the, the reason they made this movie might have been that he wanted an excuse to drink, but he's super Christian and he's like, oh, you know, why I could drink a lot in method acting. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where he sadly takes like he's going to do some sad thinking. And so he sadly takes his bottle of peach schnapps to do the sad thinking. It's amazing. Yeah. So that is not a sad drink. <laughs> That's that sad thinking drink, mate. Come on. And also, by the way, and this is I, I I would like to say this is a signature of the Wright family movies. We've only watched two of them, so I don't know. But the reader board is back. Yep. Eli, did you see this? Yep, the menu special board. Yes, it's in the back, and it says Shabbat Shalom, welcome God. This time, okay. This okay. I have a very upsetting question. Uh huh. Because this movie contains. A jar of gefilte fish. I don't remember where, but it is in there. Mm. Manischewitz wine and a sign that says Shabbat Shalom. Is, is there any chance <laughs> that the rights <laughs> are Jewish? Based on their filmmaking skills alone, I'm going to say no, Eli. <laughs> Wait, I, there's no way. Maybe they were just in hopes that like it would help them control the media. They were like, no, trust me, this is the work for Steven... <laughs> Steel hammer. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So, okay. So then we cut to Rachel that night, praying that God won't murder grandma for just a little bit longer. Oh, and they've really overdone how poor she is. Like, like all of her walls are like unpainted and she's got driftwood for a headboard. It's like a driftwood yes. headboard. Uh -huh. And also the bed springs on her bed are so God damn loud. Oh, yes. Yes. yeah. So, so much so that I I honestly, like, I would be 0% surprised to learn that that's like a weird anti-masturbation bed that they bought their <laughs> kids or something. <laughs> right? So, okay. So then we cut to the next day. Rachel goes to see Michael. Like, I guess they're friends now. But she's gone to tell him that they're going to have to go stay in the homeless shelter. Right. That they're on the way to the homeless shelter. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he says, and I quote, oh, you don't have to do that. I have a two bedroom guest house in the back. <laughs> Why the fuck would you have that? Yeah. Yeah. It's ludicrous. It's two. It's two bedroom and it's got two floors as well. So it's like yes. a two up, two down house, like a detached house in his backyard. <laughs> Apparently. And we, he backyard. didn't have that big a backyard. We've seen him looking at his backyard when he was looking at the shed. It's there's not. I didn't think there was much space there. Well, but probably because he had to put a whole two bedroom house <laughs> up there. <laughs> Yes. All he that goes, Amazon Prime money's paying off. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, I don't know what to say. And then he pauses really fucking long because clearly he doesn't know what to say either, but just because he's a bad actor. <laughs> and because his wife yelled at him for saying, I need to leave the scene now in the first six <laughs> takes. So, yeah, he goes, she goes, I don't know what to say. He goes, me neither, because I forgot my line. And then they hug for way too long. Way too long. Right now, like, again, it's his daughter, so it's not too long. But, like, within the movie, as the little girl I met the day before yesterday, it's way too long. Yeah, yes. that is a long hug. That is a long, it doesn't, it doesn't help his reputation from the guy who was giving her money and candy and clothes and don't tell anyone. <laughs> right. And then a really long hug. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, live in, exactly. and live in my back house. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then she goes to leave, and I guess like the movie realizes that at this point, at two thirds of the way through, that they have not named either of their characters, mm. right? So she says, "Oh, by the way, I'm Rachel," and he goes, "Wow, that was my wife's name as well." And we're like, "Wow, that's just a weird and useless Could coincidence." Mm. <laughs> and she's like, "And my grandma's name's Alice." He's like, "Yeah, I don't 
Okay. I don't have Nobody. anything for that. I don't know. Okay. I didn't ask your grandma's name, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, no, no, thank you. All right. Well, they finally remembered to give one of the movie's characters a name. So I, I feel like we need to celebrate that with another break. <laughs> Let me give Act Through the Hard Sell, though. Did this movie just establish and resolve its plot in the same sentence? Will any previous scene ever have a bearing on a later one? What do these people think movies are exactly? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the just over conclusion of Halloween Hero. Hi, I'm sorry. Do you work here? Uh, yeah. How can I help? I'm making a movie, uh, and I need props for the robber. Do y'all have fake guns here? Oh, yeah, we sure do. We sure do. How's this one? Oh, that's perfect. Okay. And then I also need, uh, what are they called? Uh, um, a robber mask. Oh, okay. So do you mean like a like a ski mask or like an old-timey robber mask with, like, with the eye holes? No, no, neither of those. Oh, oh. That one. That's the, that's the one. Okay, so this is a mask of of former President Barack Obama. Oh, um, well, uh, it's perfect. It's perfect. Okay, so so by robber mask, you meant I meant this one. Yes, I meant this one. I feel like I should call somebody, but I don't know who. I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with a shot of leaves and a gutter for so fucking long that you started wondering if they were the plot yeah. of the movie. I really expected us to pan down and see grandma lying in the gutter having OD'd on H at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they were very proud of their leaves in the gutter scene. And then we got to Michael. Now, the, the kid and, and grandma are about to move into his guest house. So we see him cleaning all the alcohol bottles up, you know, turning his life around a bit, right? But And again, this is where there's a jar of gefilte fish. Yeah, I had to look at what that was. It's like a fish paste thing. It's so much worse. It's, it is ground up fish formed into a, a brick, a oval shape. Okay. Ugh. The end of sentence. Oh, wow. Suspended in jelly. But he had Ew. that like amongst all of his booze and things. So I thought, is that... Is he going to use that in a cocktail? I, I mean, I can only assume that's what he's doing with it, but I can't imagine how that's going to go. I'll tell you how gross gefilte fish is. If we were to set up some kind of prank thing where we exposed Noah to gross foods, I wouldn't be able to use gefilte fish because he would actually just vomit. <laughs> right? I could probably get him to Google image gefilte fish safely, and that is it. <laughs> it's the extent of the food-based shenanigans gefilte fish could be involved in. There's also this great moment where the, the autofocus just starts going nuts as he's cleaning up these <laughs> bottles, moving them too close to the camera. Oh, it was great. All right, and, and then and then because he's a responsible adult with his firearm, mm. he says, you know what? With a kid living around here, I'm going to need to st store this gun somewhere safe, like this kitchen drawer. Yes. Yeah, you know, that junk drawer we've all got. You put your gun next to your fucking measuring tape yeah. and your screwdriver that you use for everything. Yeah, exactly. He just puts his, he's like, he's like well, I don't want to have it sitting on the counter. No, you're going you're <laughs> to put it where nobody's going to find it and shoot themselves with it in like a, a year's time or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah exactly. You might as well attach it to the fridge with a magnet. <laughs> <laughs> but like a post-it note saying don't. So, you know, responsible. Don't yeah, right, yeah, shoot no. <laughs> yourself with this. <laughs> so, yeah. So then he goes upstairs and he takes down his dead wife memory box, mm -hmm. which every person with a tragic backstory has. But his, by the way, it has one of those fucking Facebook ad for a T-shirt with way too much writing on it, things, images on the front of it with a Bible <laughs> quote. Yeah. It's just the chintziest, cheapest, shittiest looking thing. Yeah. It screams not quite the quality we're looking for here at Pier 1 Imports. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, okay. So then we cut over to Rachel telling Grandma the good news. Grandma is... I wrote in my notes, understandably skeptical. I'm going to go ahead and say not skeptical enough, though, about the grown-ass man who this girl met four days ago that wants them to move in now. Yeah. Yeah. I think Grandma's not really worried about that, but that's mostly because she's too busy moving like an animatronic marionette operated by a street performer right now. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. She's like, well, we don't know him, but... I don't know who gives a fuck. Is this, this is the homeless <laughs> shelter, right? So you know, yeah. I, I'm. I guess what Grandma's trying to say is, if he molests you, he molests you. <laughs> Jesus Christ! 
So yeah, so so she's like, all right, I'm gonna go pack up all of our belongings real quick, and she's like, well, that'll only take about three minutes. That should be fine. <laughs> and then so and then we get her like back in her bed praying again. She thanks God for for Michael taking him in and reminds him subtly that Grandma's still eyeing day if you owe day <laughs> when I eat May, right? <laughs> And then we, we listen to her creaky bed for so long. Fuck. Oh, me. God. It hurt. She tries to get into that and she's like, yeah! <laughs> Is this kid sleeping on like a supermarket trolley? Is that what this is? <laughs> she lifts up the mattress. There's a Hellraiser underneath it just being pressed down onto the spot. Oh, oh that makes this, sense now. This is making a lot more sense. So, also, so uh, we cut over to Michael. He's also. Now, I thought he was praying. He's talking to his dead wife here, right? It yeah. takes a while for me to figure that out. Yeah, I thought he was going to turn over and have just fucked grandma. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> well, he does say that I did promise never to sleep in this bed again. And we we don't know. We didn't see him make that promise and we don't know which bed this is. So so that could be entirely plausible, Eli. That could have been Oh, yeah, though well. no, you're right. Thank so, you, Marsh. I'm like, well, do you have, because you know you have a two-bedroom out back maybe you could use one of the bedrooms or the beds there but yeah and then he so he's talking to his wife and he's like i met this little girl i met another rachel i'm gonna laugh way too creepy for it to be a 10 year old girl right and i thought he was still talking to god at this point when it's like i met another rachel and i'm gonna be like you know don't kill this one <laughs> no I'm, I'm just playing with you you can kill if you want it's up to you it's fine you're gone you're gone you can do it yeah it's fine. right right he goes i'm reading your bible to his wife, you know, mm. I guess she was a big fan of the Bible. And he says, and I've decided not to kill myself. I'm going to live for the 10 year old girl I just met. Yeah. In fact, he says to his wife, quote, I'm going to love this little girl like I tried to do for you. Yes. She's, how could they not hear the Lolita? You got to know, mm. guys. Yeah. I don't believe you don't know. Also, <laughs> he says, I'm going to protect her like I did you. And I wrote my notes. I mean, she got yeah, shot. Yeah, you've been a little better. Empire. Better. <laughs> Maybe insist that this next one wears her word fast. Really. And show her how to put it on. Think about given it. Given yeah. what we've seen with her and Jacket, she's not going to intuit it. <laughs> That's true. So, all right. So, so now we get mom and grandma showing up to move into their guest house. And I felt this is the only time in the movie that I actually felt sorry for David. Owen oh, right because at this point he has to explain why the drywalling isn't done in this fucking <laughs> room. This <laughs> so, by the way, I'm gonna finish this drywall. I know Ashley. I mean, my wife keeps keeps complaining about it, but yeah. oh god, yeah, like this the the room that they're stood in is basically set up like a death trap for a child. There's like sharp objects everywhere. There's nails <laughs> sticking out of things. Wiring, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's, he's explaining all the drywalling. Then he turns to the grandma who's off screen at this point, right? We can see the little girl and we can see a box hovering that we're supposed to believe the grandma <laughs> is holding. I just love that grandma's carrying her own box. Yeah. <laughs> she has six months to live, but she was like, fuck it, I got this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I, they also, she's, the grandma's just mumbling incoherently underneath most of the dialogue in this scene. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. just great. Everyone just ignores her speaking. I, I laughed so hard about the fact that they just ignore her. And she's like, oh, this is lovely. Oh, yes. what's up? Anyways, <laughs> like I was saying, you're going to be on the second floor. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, at a, at a certain point, he does acknowledge her. He goes, uh, how you doing, Grandma? You're an extant actor who isn't my wife in a babushka, <laughs> aren't you? And he's like, come on upstairs. This is where we first realized that his spare house is two stories. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and he takes the little girl up to a room where he's got this great big Barbie doll house and a four-poster bed. Now, he doesn't have a dead kid in this movie. No. 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 So did he just have all of those toys was what I was thinking immediately. Is that what mm -hmm. did he just happen to have this set up for when he found a child he could have living there? <laughs> like this was like he was just trying to lure them in, like some sort of fucking yes. witch in a Hansel yeah. and Gretel novel. <laughs> yeah, that or him and his wife were into some really upsetting role play. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> all right. Now this room, this was a sinful room before. It's nice now. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I had a realization here where I realized that like, this must actually be their daughter's room. Mm -hmm. And I was real oh, bummed yeah. out. Yeah, kind of bummed you Because it, because look, they don't have any art. They don't have any. They don't watch TV. I'm sure they don't do anything. So it's just this bare fucking 
room. Yeah, she with can't have no... pictures of boys on the walls. That's right. I'm, so yeah. it's just like there is a dollhouse and a place for your consciousness to cease, <laughs> and that is all. <laughs> and then the kid like wake, like goes to the dollhouse, and I I thought this wasn't their dollhouse because she sort of waves her hand and very slightly touches the dollhouse, like she's displaying the star prize on a game show. Like, Ooh, yes, look at what we could have won for like a weirdly long time, like sixty seconds. We watch her like caress the aura of this dollhouse. Yeah, and I thought, okay, this is another budget, so we're gonna have to spend some of the budget on like a really fancy dollhouse. No, 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 it's fine. Like, we'll just buy it and then set it up. And as long as no one ever actually touches it even once, we can just return it for a full <laughs> week. It's totally fine. Totally fine. Know. Our daughter won't mind. Yeah. She'll just gently caress a- around it. Well, here's the fucked up thing, right, is that we're going to learn in the credits that the daughter wrote this movie, right, <laughs> or co-wrote this movie, which means that at some point she wrote, and then y'all could buy me a real nice dollhouse. They're like, we'll rent one. We'll borrow one <laughs> we'll from rent. the movie. But all right. We will go to a neighbor attic where they keep their haunted <laughs> dollhouse and you can stand in the same room yeah there you go as long as you don't touch it <laughs> and in this scene we get another shot of grandma and it's like how does she look even more like a papier mache puppet like at this point right she looks exactly like the blind lady from that lionel richie video tried to make Chevy Chase in Community. I know that's a convoluted <laughs> set of references, but that's exactly what the old lady looks like in this. Yeah, no, it's it's good. It's good. Solid. So, okay, so then we cut to Michael and Rachel having a traditional American meal of Reese's Chips Ahoy and Twinkies. It's the most American possible thing for them to be <laughs> eating right there. Unless he had been eating his gun, you know, like a bacon-wrapped <laughs> right. gun. But they're, and they're playing a game of life. What is with Christians and that boring ass board game? <laughs> yeah, well, it's the only board game they can find that reinforces their worldview, right? You know, they can't they can have kids going around waking daddy. <laughs> <laughs> And oh God, the fact that they're playing the game of life, I really hope there's like a card in the game where your wife gets killed while on patrol as a K9 officer, and then he's got to like really sadly take the little pink peg back out of his car. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so and, and and there's also this great moment where we see her like puzzling over her next move, which <laughs> to be clear is to spin the wheel and then go that many spaces. <laughs> Do that. Yeah. <laughs> you can just life can play itself. Yeah, you really? actually you don't, don't need to, to participate. Yeah. yeah. So and and he goes, "So how did your parents die?" And she says, "Well, you know, it's a Christian movie, so obviously it was a car crash. I don't know why you <laughs> had to ask." How did your wife die? She's like, oh, she was shot in the back by Elmer Fudd. <laughs> I wish he goes, my wife was in an accident with the bullet. Not what yeah. an accident is. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah she, but my wife died in an accident. She accidentally forgot to check her six. And then that's yeah, how she true. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the little girl's like, well, it is a right family movie. He's like, it sure is. Yeah. <laughs> and then they talk for a minute about how their loved ones are are all in heaven now. He even says, I bet your parents and my wife are watching us from heaven right now. I'm like, imagine how boring heaven would have to be for you to be watching your loved ones play life. Yeah, I mean, and also you're playing the game of life. I mean, a bit insensitive, like not with the dead guys watching. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma, how's this feel, huh? To make it all the way to the end of your life? Yes. Huh? <laughs> And then again, because my, I guarantee you, because Michael insists on this, he's like, well, I have to go get my Jeep fixed. Yeah, mid game. Right. He's like, anyway, get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> well, and that's the thing is that like they could have started this dialogue with her going, I won. And then they could be cleaning up the game as they had yeah. this conversation. But no, he says, well, I'm going to have to leave midway through this game now and go get my Jeep fixed. And he says to her, I'll meet up with you later on, which is such a weird thing to say to a child that you're living with. <laughs> Like You're right. living in your house. <laughs> I'll see you around here. The kitchen, most likely, and the living room. Yeah. So, yeah, he well anyways says that way out of yet another scene. And by the way, if you're thinking to yourself, oh, is the fact that his Jeep is broken going to matter? No. Mm-mm. No, Michael just had to leave the scene and didn't want us to think he had vanished from consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So then... In possibly the most somehow the most useless scene in this movie, we get Rachel and Grandma stopping by to ask Michael if he wants to go on an ice cream date with them. 
because they, they've got ice cream money now. Now that they live with him, they're like, oh yeah, no, it's fine. We've got ice cream money. We'll go out and buy you ice creams and things. It's, we we yeah. were penniless seconds ago, but now we're just buying ice creams. Well, now that we don't have to worry about that fucking rent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So he's like, oh, you know, my Jeep's in the shop or I would give you a ride. And we were and then we're like, oh, well, obviously the fact that the Jeep is going to is broken down matters now. But still, no, maybe his Jeep was actually broken. Maybe that, that is his Jeep. Maybe it just <laughs> yeah. was broken. And he was in, he was incapable of keeping that from the camera. He just, whatever <laughs> was going on in his actual life, he just spurted out. He was so heartbroken <laughs> about that, that it came up every other sentence anyway. And his <laughs> wife was just like, you know what? Use it for the movie, hun. Then we cut to him shaving his head shirtlessly. Now, this scene exists only so that he can say, see, I'm not bald. I do this on purpose. I do this on purpose. 100%. Unlike certain podcasters, I know. I just won't throw that out there. Some of us are shaving it off. So, yeah, the, the movie now has three minutes to establish and resolve a plot. I'm starting to think it won't happen. Then he goes to the cemetery to talk to his dead wife some more. He's going to adopt Rachel. You know, that child that's lived with him for 10 minutes. Yes. Uh huh. He tells his wife's ghost that. At this point in the movie, I now believe the kidnapper from earlier was just trying to save Rachel from this crazy. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because he's saying, you know, it's time for me to move on to a different Rachel. Is that what he's insisting? Yes. Implying? Yeah. Right. It's like he's breaking up with his dead wife's ghost yeah. now. And he something. says, and I'm a father now. Like, no, you're fucking not. You've, you've, <laughs> you've got lodges is what you've got. <laughs> yeah, right. You're a landlord now. But yeah, but he's decided to adopt Rachel. So then we see him like bowing down at his wife's grave. And now I'm sure you walk around a cemetery long enough, you'll probably find someone named Rachel there. But you know what would be quicker would just be to have him bow down to the back of a grave <laughs> yes. so that there's no name on it at all. Yeah, we actually, There was a spacing issue at the graveyard. They gave us half <laughs> off if they could bury her face down and backwards. Yeah. And the thing is, it's like, so for this grave scene, come on, we, now we're definitely going to blow some of the budget on a headstone and then put her name on it, surely. No, 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 we'll just film behind the biggest nameless headstone at the entirety of the cemetery. Yeah. It'll be fine. It's fucking massive. Like, did we really think he's built a mausoleum to his dead wife in the middle of this cemetery? Right. So, yeah, so but then he ends the scene. We see him walking into church. So he's turned his life over to Christ more now. Honestly, I was just impressed that he didn't loudly announce to the grave, I'm walking into a church now. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah. I will continue to exist once the dorks close behind <laughs> me. And then we cut to one year later. And the, so little has happened in this movie that you almost have to say one year later than what? <laughs> exactly. Then what? <laughs> So, yeah. So and, and again, that means that the do you want to go get ice cream with us? That scene existed for its own sake. Right. The little girl, that poor little girl wrote into the script and then you guys could take me for ice cream. <laughs> and he's like, no, the Jeep's broken. We will say we'll take you for ice cream. <laughs> so, but so, OK, so but now na Rachel is narrating. Right. She's telling us that grandma passed away. So God ignored those prayers. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But, you know, silver lining it made filming much, much simpler. Just really streamlined. <laughs> <the shoot. laughs> she had this weird marionette thing going on by the end. Yeah. <laughs> they have this insane moment. And again, it's just poor writing where she's like, grandma died and that was sad. But I now enjoy walking. Yeah. Right. She says, and I quote, life is better now. And I'm like, then when grandma was still alive. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And she's, she's saying, you know, she's talking about how much God's done for her. And it's like, yeah, after my parents both died in a, just a horrible, horrible accident. And, you know, my grandma was impoverished and terminally ill and then eventually died. But, you know, God's done so much for me. She, he really has. Done yes, so he's much. nailing it now. <laughs> really pulled it off in the fourth quarter. I'll tell you. <laughs> in the fourth. Let me tell you. <laughs> I mentioned I'm a Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she goes, and she, she ends this by going, nobody's like God. God's perfect. That's the, the wrap up on the, he killed my grandma speech. And then we get what I have to assume is the like Ashley Hayes, Wright signature shot to close the movie of a leaf with a heart shaped hole at in it pointing towards the sun. Yeah, this is also how they ended the last Mooney Marsh, just okay, so you know, gotcha. this, this exact same This shot. is like Tarantino with feet, got you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But, but they also did it as incongruously 
in this movie as they did it the last time, right? Because the last time we saw that, and then as suddenly these big block letters that run in like fucking RoboCop shooting somebody or whatever. But in this movie, we see that shot. Everything is over. Mm. And then out of the goddamn blue, when you're expecting <laughs> credits to start, the little girl... The, the credits are starting. Yes. The credits are starting. Yes, the credits have already started. The little girl comes running, screaming into the house and tells... Michael, that somebody just pulled up and tried to sell her drugs. Yeah, during the credits. Like, this is the thing. Like, we're not seeing no, this. We're just hearing, we're just hearing yeah. her, her terror. And the thing is, I think this is where the Wright family are innovators. You know, because, yeah, Marvel, you did the post credit action scene thing where everyone stuck around after the credits. But this is an entirely new idea of a mid credits, literally while the credits are on screen, just off like, the actions off screen <laughs> during the credits action scene. This is, this yeah. is groundbreaking. So, yeah, so the movie ends, the credits are playing, like everything blacks out. We see him run outside to go deal with this drug dealer. Everything blacks out, and we hear like 45 seconds of his him giving his fucking, I don't know, his shower speech of what he'd ever do if somebody tried to sell his kids drugs. Where he starts talking. He's muttering threats for, for yes. just quietly until the sound cuts out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, He's so sure it's badass, but doesn't know that he loses track of the sentence. He's like, now Jesus forgave me, so I'm going to forgive you. But here's how I'm not like Jesus. In I would kick your... Okay, well, there are several <laughs> ways I would, in which... I don't even have sandals. He had sleeves. I had, I, if you had <laughs> drugs for me... Okay, wait. No, there's... If you try to sell drugs to Jesus, then I'll forgive him. <laughs> I wrote my notes. Nothing is happening. I still wonder what isn't happening. Mm. So, and then we get my best words. We get the silent credit bullshit of 19 second long stills. And then the music butts in like it was sick of waiting. <laughs> right? <laughs> the music is just like, oh, God damn it. We got 25 seconds left. I'm playing. <laughs> And then we get, honestly, I think maybe my favorite detail of the whole fucking movie, right? Because this is where it comes up and it says, writer, Cadence Wright, age 11, as if to say, see, you fucking asshole podcasters, my 11-year-old girl wrote this. But then, yes, right after that, it says, writer, David Owen Wright, because he would be damned if he was going to give his 11-year-old the ability to soak up all that screenplay glory. <laughs> now, now, honey, daddy wrote that weird fucking convoluted sentence at the end that I threatened the drug dealer. With. Also, she she wrote, and then we go for ice cream, and he wrote the, no, we don't bit, and that was his <laughs> yeah, right. But you know what actually happened is she wrote the little story, the cutesy little story of the little poor girl who found somebody who needed somebody to love or whatever, and then he's like, all right, and I could kick a robber's ass here and a kidnapper's ass here and a drug dealer's <laughs> ass here. Done. We nailed it. Sitting there in the writer's room. Maybe I could write it by myself. <laughs> no, Honey, I'm a, I am an Amazon Prime YouTube listed filmmaker, hon. All right, listen to daddy. So. Would you grab me the gun out of the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right. So uh, that and that's the end. Then, then we get proper credits that scroll as well in case those first credits didn't really do it for you. Same names, by the way. They're not more names in these ones. And that's why we find out that the wardrobe and equipment was by their 12-year-old child as well. And I thought the wardrobe yes. and equipment, that's just the masks, isn't it? That's the racist mask mm. and the various of the masks. That's most of the equipment that we've seen here. Right, and the half-drunk bottles. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> did the 12-year-old choose all of the booze that he drinks? Because that suddenly makes sense as to why it's such a random <laughs> scat yeah. approach to alcoholism. <laughs> yes. All right, so that's the end of the movie. What was the moral of the story? What did we learn here today? Uh, uh, don't encourage your children to do everything. <laughs> uh, and if 11-year-old knocks on the door, you get to keep her? Okay, yeah, that's a helpful message. All right, so I guess that's going to do it for our review of Halloween Horror, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we're not yet done going and fucking ourselves. So, Eli, tell us, what's on deck? Well, Noah, we'll be watching the 1981 film Years of the Beasts. So uh, get ready for some short shorts again. Uh. 
So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 376 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Marsh. Be sure to check the show notes for links to all his other work and a perhaps even huger thanks to the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us out a ton by leaving a five-star review, by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoy this show, of course, you can also help us by checking out our sibling shows, The Scaling Atheist, Citation Data, D&D Minus, The Skeptic Rat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and Google Drive Summers. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club Close. Michael's casual approach to gun safety and his evident propensity for sudden violence went on to be just super awesome traits in a father. <laughs> that Tupac mask was later invoked as some of David Owen Wright's best friends in an argument. <laughs> the Wrights have still made like five or six other movies and I'm still going to watch every single damn oh, one. Dude, Ashley Hayes Wright has 42 directing credits on IMDb all since I 2019. Know including one listed as a TV series with one episode. <laughs> I know. I, I don't dare to hope. I don't dare to hope. Who's the great basilisk and it keeps his... Sorry. What? Dormant is what I was going. <laughs> really should do a spell check before I jump into this. Okay, here we go. You can't do a spell check on this. It'll just break. No, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I would have to... It's that's. I would otherwise do a spell check every time. Okay. It's like it's technically cruelty to an AI to it. Just <laughs> spell check this. <laughs> so this is how you get a Westworld uprising. Now. Right, yes. Yeah. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC, copyright 2022. All rights.